darlings, Mimi G here with another step-by-step -step video tutorial as part of my Mimi G for Simplicity pattern collection. I'm really excited about my spring patterns, especially 1167, which is this really amazing pants and short suit. And we're going to start by making view D, which is the blazer. So let's get started. If you are a beginner and you need help with choosing the right pattern size, laying out your fabric, cutting out your pattern pieces, a little bit about interfacing and grain lines, I suggest you go back and watch the basics video before getting started. Now aside from all of the basic tools that I share in the basics video, you are also going to need uh, some interfacing for this project and you're also going to need a one inch button. Let's go over all of the pattern pieces that we're going to need to complete view D. Now, before you start passing out on me, I know it's a lot of pattern pieces, but trust me, it's going to go by fast. We're going to do this together. You know, if you are a beginner, I suggest doing all of the cutting at one time. So take all of the information that you learned in the basics, cut out all of your pattern pieces, cut out all of your fabric, put on some music and just chill and do all of the cutting. If you're tired after that, take a break, come back tomorrow and do the sewing. <laughs> now we're going to start by going over all of the pieces by number and what you need to cut them out of. The front facing band, which is number 26, you're going to cut it out of fabric and out of interfacing. Pattern piece number 19, you're going to be cutting out of lining only. The neck band is cut on the fold and you're going to be cutting one out of fabric and one out of interfacing. Pattern piece number 27, you're going to be cutting out of lining only. Pattern number 21 is the pocket and you're going to need to cut out four of these two out of fabric and two out of lining. Pattern piece number 18, yes, <laughs> 18, you're going to need to cut out out of fabric. Number 28, you're going to need to cut out two out of fabric and two out of lining. Pattern piece number 29, you're also going to need to cut out two out of fabric and two out of lining. Pattern piece number 20, you're going to need to cut out out of fabric. Pattern piece 25, which is our front facing, you're going to need to cut out two out of fabric and two out of interfacing. Number 23 is the back of our jacket, you're going to need to cut two out of fabric. And number 17, which is the front of our jacket, you're going to need to cut out two out of fabric. And then there's pattern piece number 22, which is the flap of our pocket, and you're going to need to cut out four. You're going to cut out four out of fabric, or four, or two out of fabric, and two out of lining, depending on which you prefer. Make sure that before you cut out anything that you fully read, everything that is on your pattern piece. It will tell you exactly how many to cut and whether or not it's being cut on the fold or not on the fold, if it's being cut out of lining or uh, interfacing or fabric or all three or two or just one. So you wanna make sure that you always, always read what is on each pattern piece before you cut. I have already cut out all of my pattern pieces. I have cut out all of my lining and I have already, and I have already started interfacing some of my pieces. So I'm going to show you really quickly how to interface. Now interfacing has a bumpy side which is the side that has the glue on it because it's fusible. So what I do is I lay it wrong sides facing. So the bumpy side of my interfacing to the wrong side of my fabric and then using a pressing cloth or a towel or whatever you have handy. This is just a piece of organza. You take your uh, iron and you make sure it's hot and you just hold and press for a couple of seconds. No back and uh, forth motion. You just want to hold and move up a bit and hold. And you're going to continue in that motion until the entire piece is fused together like this. You have a whole lot of options when it comes to the fabric for this suit. You can use a lightweight linen, a lightweight denim, you can use a sateen, you could use a poplin. You could even make the entire thing out of a double knit which would be amazing and is next on my list of course. And you can always find all of the suggested fabrics on the back of the envelope. 
A really quick tip if you are new and are not used to sewing with so many pieces, it might be easier for you to cut out all of your pieces, cut out all of your lining, interface anything that needs interfacing, and then once you have it all cut out, match your fabric to your pattern piece and then uh, grab a pin and just pin them together. That way you don't lose track of what piece is what and then you might be confused. And if I say grab your front facing, you can quickly identify which one is the front facing and you can get moving. Now that we have all of our fabric and lining pieces cut and interfaced, we can get to sewing. Okay, we're going to start with uh, pattern piece 17, which is the front of our jacket. So we need those pieces. And we're also going to need your... Um, inset pieces so grab both of those and then also grab your inset facings which we cut out of lining okay set those aside and now we're going to start with the front of our jacket now you should have transferred all of your markings so there should be a little dot on the front of your jacket right so on that dot I want you to pin and what we're going to do is, this is going to be the collar, you know, of our jacket. So what we're going to do is we're going to reinforce this corner because we're going to cut into it. I'm going to put my needle down right at the dot. And I'm going to sew for about an inch or so. And then I'm going to stop. And then I'm going to do the same thing in the other direction. put my needle into my dot and I'm going to sew for about an inch so now in that corner it should look like this and then I want you to take your scissors and I want you to snip till until you get to your dot but don't go through your stitching okay And you're going to do the same thing to the other front piece. Okay, now I want you to grab your inset piece and your lining piece. And we're going to, with right sides facing, we're going to match up our notches. So you should have two notches, right? So you're going to pin at your notch. And then, of course, pin at the top and then pin at the bottom for me. And then using uh, 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, we're going to sew all the way down. Now that we've sewn this part, we're going to attach this end to our front uh, pattern piece, which is the front of our jacket, I should say. And we're going to be doing it to the right side. So right sides facing. We're going to align and find and align that single notch. That's how you know that you're attaching it in the right place. And then go ahead and pin at the bottom. It's going to go past that corner, right? Because we have that kind of slit that we made. And then also pin at the top just to keep everything together. And we're going to start at the bottom. Move everything out of the way. We're only sewing on these two pieces here. And sewing 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Back stitch. So it should look 
something like this. And what I want you to do is I want you to press this open and flat. So I want you to press this all the way flat. It'll just make the next step a lot easier. Okay, now that it's pressed, I want you to press it one more time where all of your seam allowances are facing the jacket and not the insert, right? So I want everything pressed this way. The reason I have you press it open first and then to one side is because we need really crisp nice seam lines on the underside and so the only way to do that is to press open and then press to one side so now that it's pressed to one side I'm gonna have you do some under stitching so I'm gonna have you stitching right along the edge here right on the side closest to our inset now all the seams are to the one side so we're going to be catching our our seam allowances underneath there and we're just going to sew really close to that. That way when we fold this over, it'll be nice and crisp. And now what we're going to do is we're going to fold this over. So we have this little notch here. We're going to fold that over like this and I'm going to have you pin and then we're going to fold over the rest of it and we'll press this entire thing after we're done so press this over and then I want you to take the remaining part of this and fold it onto itself so that it does this right and we're going to pin here and then pin here on the other side and we're going to sew through all layers from one end to the other using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance Now when you open it, we have captured the bottom portion of our inset and it's sewn onto our jacket. And now I'm going to have you base the top of this before we press it all together. And now that that's done, I want you to give this a good press, making sure that you're pressing this nice and crisp. And you want to make sure that you remove any stitching that is visible on the underside, on the uh, right side. You can just simply remove it using your sim seam ripper. And this is what it looks like underneath. You're going to do the same exact thing to the other one. And so what you're going to do now is you're going to grab your lining pocket pieces. And we're going to be placing our lining pocket pieces onto our front jacket piece okay so we have our notches and you should have your dots that you marked for that and so what you want to do is with right sides facing you're going to align the dots and your notches and you're going to pin your lining pocket to your front and now we're going to sew using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now I'm not serging my edges simply because of the tutorial. It just takes a lot longer to do, but if you have um, your serger you should be serging your seam so that you have a very nice clean finish since this jacket is only partially lined you want to make sure that you line it uh, or at least serge or overlock your edges so that it's nice and clean now go ahead and add your pocket to the front uh, other piece that you have the same way that we just did here so here's your second piece 
and with right sides facing. You're going to pin and sew the same way we did the last one. Once you have both of your lining pieces sewn on to your front pieces, we're going to grab our side panels, which is pattern piece number 20. And also on the right side, we're going to do the same thing we just did, but with our fabric pocket piece and right sides facing. We're going to do the same exact thing. Align your dots, align your notches, and you're going to sew also with a quarter inch seam allowance. You're going to do the same thing to the other side panel. You're going to attach your pocket, and once you do that, we're going to open it and we're going to press this so that the seam allowances are facing the pocket. Okay, you should have attached all of your pockets. The lining pockets went onto your front pieces and we pressed our seams towards our pocket. And then we should have done the same exact thing to the side panels where you attached your pocket right sides facing and then also pressed your seam allowances towards the pocket. Now what we're going to do is we're going to attach our side panel to our front so with right sides facing, of course, let me just grab my pieces. I have my side panel and I have my front panel and I have my pockets. So I'm going to start by aligning my pockets and you have those two notches on the pocket. Right sides are facing each other and I'm going to pin there and then I'm going to pin the corner of my pocket right here. And then I'm going to pin around the curve of my pocket. And then match your edges. And I'm going to pin. And then I'm going to pin my notch, which is on the side and the front piece. And then I'm just going to pin here at the top. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew at the top and we're going to, of course, stop at that first dot. We'll, we will backstitch and then we're going to start again at the other dot, backstitch, and then sew the remaining way down. And then we'll sew around our pocket. Now we're using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Backstitch at the beginning. When you get to the dot, backstitch. Move all the way down. Make sure that your pockets are aligned. Pin if you need to. And I'm going to have you put your needle where that dot is. Backstitch. And continue sewing all the way down. This is our pocket opening, that's why we left that space there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to sew all the way around our pocket. So I'm going to start right just before the stitching line. And using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, we're going to sew all the way around closing our pocket.
I'm gonna sew through all layers and you're gonna stop just before our stitching line. Back stitch. Trim off any loose threads. Now that we have our pocket sewn, when you turn it to the right side, you can see that we've created our pocket. Now we want to make sure that we press that pocket now towards the front of our jacket, right? We want to press it this way. So we want to make sure that everything is nice and flat and we're going to press that seam towards the front of our jacket. You're going to do the same exact thing to the other front and side panel. Now that everything is nicely pressed, you want to set these aside for just a second. Don't take them too far because we're going to grab them again in a bit. And I want you to grab your four pieces for your pocket flaps. And what we're going to do is we're going to put them right sides facing. And we're going to stitch around 3 eighths of an inch. Okay? So I'm going to cut into my corners a bit and I'm going to cut out notches is what I'm doing. And then you're going to turn this right side out and you're going to give it a good press. If you have too much excess fabric in your rounded corners, Go back on the inside and trim close to your stitching without going cutting through your stitching. Turn it back out, round out your corners, and then press the entire thing and you're going to do your other pocket flaps the same exact way. Once you have them turned right side out and you have them all pressed, you're going to sew 3 eighths of an inch at the top, just a basting stitch to close this out. And then do the same thing with the other one. Cut off any loose threads. And on the front of your jacket, you should have a marking where your flap is going to go. It's just above the pocket opening. And so this is where you are going to place it. Now you're going to place it so that the stitching line on your pocket flap is along the marked line on your jacket. And we're going to do it this way with the pocket flap up because then we're going to stitch along that same stitching line and turn our flap down. You're going to do both your pocket flaps the same exact way and then once you're done you can go ahead and top stitch this down. Now I'm using a white thread again so that you guys can see but you should absolutely be using a thread that matches your fabric as close as possible so that you uh, so that your top stitching is nice and clean and looks good. I'm going to place my needle just at the end of that flap and using a quarter inch uh, of space between my needle and where I have attached my pocket flap, we're going to stitch on the top of this. Like that. So this is the back of our jacket. And so what we wanna do is with right sides facing, we're going to stitch all the way down the back and we're going to stop at that dot where our vent is using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance
And now what I want you to do is we're going to create some stay stitching before we move forward. So what I want you to do is we're going to go from the center to one side of the neck and then from the center to one side of the neck. And we're going to be creating just some stay stitching so that our neck doesn't stretch. Starting from the center and we're going to sew about a half inch away from the edge of the fabric here. Just sew from that center to one side. And then you're going to do the same thing starting here at the other side of the center and doing sewing to the other side. Now we're going to turn this back over and we're going to press this to the left of us. Okay, so we're going to press the seam to the left of us. You're going to press the vent, everything to the left of us. Now that I have everything pressed to the left of me, I am going to take the vent that is on the right side of me and I'm going to turn it over a half inch and I'm going to sew a quarter inch from that fold. So we're going to turn over a half inch and sew a quarter inch from that fold. And then press that. I have pinned my vents together just to keep them together while I'm sewing. You can always go from where we started, stopped our stitching, creating a basting stitch from here down to the bottom if you want to do that to keep it together until you're done. Now you're going to go from, one, from this dot here where we stopped and we're going to sew across both of these, turning over the underside half an inch to match the left side. off any loose threads and then go ahead and finish pressing that half inch just to keep it nice and pressed go ahead and fold it over and then press it now we're going to attach our neckband to our back so I want you to take this little piece here that we have and I want you to align the center of it and I want you to pin and then before we continue, I'm going to have you make some slits into the back piece. Now don't go through your stitching, you know, just quarter inch slits because we need this to curve around the curve of the neck facing. Okay. Now it creates more of, of a curve when you do that. Now starting at one end, I'm going to have you pin there first and then do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to turn this over so you guys can see. Now it curves a lot easier around there, so you're going to pin. Cut off any loose threads. And now we have our neckband. I want you to press this seam open before we continue. So next we're going to attach our shoulders. So still using our back piece, I want you to go ahead and grab one front piece and we're going to align our shoulders, making sure that our notches match and you're going to pin and then pin one more time and using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance we're going to stitch across our shoulders and you're going to do the same thing to the other side so grab your uh, other front and pin it to the shoulder 
and sew across the top 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now that we have our shoulders sewn, I want you to press this open on both shoulders and then we're going to attach the other side of our side panel to our back. So I want you, starting at the bottom, I want you to pin that entire side. Make sure your notches are uh, aligned. You have two notches here. And we're going to start at the bottom and we're going to sew also using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And if you need more pins in between the bottom and your notch, just add another pin to keep it all together. Now we have attached our entire side panel to our front and to our back. And you're going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, I want you to grab pieces 25 and 26, which are the facing pieces and the facing band. And so what we're going to do is along this edge here, we're going to sew 3 eighths of an inch all the way till we get to the curve and the bottom of it. And then we're going to make a couple of slits here so that this can have a little bit of movement. So we're going to just do a basting stitch. Like this. And then here in this curved area, we're just going to make a couple of snips. Same way as we did for that neck band. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our neck band and we're going to attach it to our facing. So we're going to first line up our notch. So you should have a single notch on both your front facing and your facing band. So let's pin there first. And then we're going to pin at the top. And then when we get here, I'm going to have you pin at the bottom first. And then we're just going to curve this around. And pin it. Once we have it all pinned, we're going to sew our band onto our facing. Starting at the top and sewing 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. We're going to sew all the way down. Now I'm going to have you press this open. And you're going to do the same exact thing to the other front facing and front band. Once you're done with both and you have given it a good press, you can finish the other end any way that you want. So you could overlock or serge this curve here, or you can uh, turn under a quarter inch and sew close to the edge all the way down to finish it. That is completely up to you. Now once you have this done, we're going to set this aside and we're going to grab our lining pieces and we're going to grab our partial lining for the back. Grab the two pieces that you have for your partial lining and what you're going to do is you're going to lay one on top of the other, just like this, that both right sides are facing you. So we're actually laying one wrong side on top of a right side. Now I want you to pin it the way I have it pinned here. So pin it across the shoulder, leaving the end of it free, and then pin once in the middle to keep it all together. And what you're going to do is you can either serge this if you'd like, you can overlock the edge of this, 
or you can turn it under a quarter inch which is what I'm going to do and sew all the way around. It may be easier if you press it so you could press your quarter inch and then do it and we're going to do it on both this edge and then this edge. I pressed under my quarter inch so I'm actually going to sew on the right side of my fabric and I'm going to just sew pretty close to the edge of the fold. And you're going to do the same thing to the other side. Now that you finished the edges, I'm going to have you baste across the top of the shoulder and then we're going to baste across the neck and then down the other shoulder. Now we're going to attach our back facing to our lining. We're going to cut slits into our neckline. And aligning our notches. I'm going to pin. And then just like we did for the jacket, you're going to pin at one end and pin at the other end. With 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, we're going to sew all the way across the neck. And we're also going to press this open. Now we're going to sew our shoulder seams together with our facing to our lining. So we want to match our notch. And then pin at the beginning. And we're going to sew all the way across using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're going to do the same thing with the other shoulder facing to lining and you're going to sew across the same exact way and then you're going to press your seams open. Now we're going to sew our lining, partial lining and facing onto our jacket. So as you can see here's the jacket, here's the center back and so I'm going to grab my facing And with right sides facing each other, I'm going to first align both of my neck bands. And I'm going to pin at the beginning of the shoulder. Make sure that you align your seam lines. And then we're going to continue pinning. And then all the way along down the front, make sure that you are aligning your notches. Don't forget about your notches. Pin around your curve. And you can pin a lot more or less depending on what you're comfortable with. I always find that the more pins I have, the more control I have. And you're going to continue pinning on the other side the same way. Once everything is pinned, I want you to start from the center back and work all the way down one side and then we're going to start again at the center back and work the other way because we don't want to cause any stretching. So across the back, we're going to sew using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And when I want
want you to pivot and then we're going to sew across. And you're going to stop. And now we're going to do that all over again, starting again in the middle. Put your needle where your existing stitching is so that you know you're not leaving any empty spaces. And you're going to do the same thing till you get to the other end. Once you've sewn it all the way around, go ahead and start clipping and trimming some of your seam allowance. I'm going to trim my seam allowance to a quarter inch. And then I want you to clip into the curve of your neck. And I want you to clip into your corner. Pretty close to your stitching, but don't cut through your stitching, okay? And then trim. Now we can turn this facing to the inside. Use your scissors or a point turner if you have one and just push out the corners of your collar, the points of your collar. And now what you want to do is, working on the inside, right, you want to press your seam allowances open as far as you can. So it's going to take a little maneuvering, but get in there with your iron and press the seam that we just sewed all the way around open as far as you can. Now that we have turned it over, or turned in our lining and facing, and we have pressed it all the way around, so we're going to stitch the uh, the facing, the back neck facing, and the back together. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up your lining, and we're going to take our seam allowances, and we're going to sew them together. So I'm going to pin. We're going to try and sew as much of it as we can. There we go. And we're going to sew through uh, the entire thickness. Now we've sewn it together so that it won't move or shift. Now we're going to do the same thing by attaching the lining and the facing to the arm's eye. So we're going to match our shoulder seams and we're going to pin. And then we're just going to follow along and pin one more time. And the same thing on this side. And we're going to pin. And we're going to do just a quick basting stitch around this area here, just so that this does not move. Now it's sewn together and when we attach our sleeve, we attach it to this entire piece because now it's just all one piece. And you're going to do the same thing to the other side of your arm's eye. Now we're going to finish off the hem. So I have already pressed up my hem allowance, which is an inch and a half. And I have pinned it all the way across the bottom. So go ahead and do that. 
And then what we're going to do is on the vent, the one that folds over the top, right? This side, we're going to turn it over onto itself. I'm going to remove this pin for a sec. And we're going to fold it along the crease. And I'm going to pin. And what we're going to do is, since we've already pressed that one and a half inch, we have that crease there, right? And so we want to sew right on that crease. So now it looks like this. Now if we turned it over, then we would just have a corner here, but we want to get rid of some of that excess. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim this top layer, this part here, down to about a quarter inch. And then we're going to trim about five eighths of an inch in. And we're going to cut that off. Now when we turn it inside we have less bulk. And use your scissors to push that corner out. Now we're going to set our jacket aside and we're going to work on our sleeves. So I want you to take one upper sleeve and one lower sleeve, under sleeve and upper sleeve. And we're going to lay them with right sides facing. And we're going to match up our notches. So we want to pin. And then pin here at the top. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pin both sides before we sew them. Pin at the bottom. And now we're going to sew using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And now we're going to do the other side. Now we've sewn both sides. We have our sleeve. Right, there you see. So what I want you to do is I want you to press these seams open and then I want you to do your other sleeve the same exact way and I also want you to do your lining sleeves the same exact way. Okay, I finished sewing the sleeves and I did it both out of my lining and then I sewed my sleeves out of my fabric of course. Um, so I'm going to show you kind of my cheat way of avoiding any hand sewing. <laughs> so what I did is I marked off an inch and a half. I measured up from the bottom and I marked an inch and a half and I'm going to cut this off of my lining. You should do this uh, laying flat on the table but I'm, I'm trying to do it on camera for you. So. And so now what I'm going to do is, and do that for both your lining sleeves, I'm going to take one of my sleeves and I'm going to slip my sleeve inside of my lining. Make sure it's the right sleeve to the right lining. And you want to go ahead and match your notches 
just going to pin in place. We're actually not going to do anything to the top of this just yet. I just want you to pin it in place. Pin your single notch. And now, as you can see at the bottom, the lining is shorter than our jacket. So what we're going to do is we're going to let that sleeve sink in and we're going to pin at the hem. And I'm going to pin the other seam. I'm making sure to align my seam lines. And I'm going to sew using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way around. And now I want you to remove the pins and we're going to pull our sleeve apart and then you're going to pull the lining inside. Now we're going to align our notches again. I'm going to align our double notch. Pin. Now what happens is when you pull and adjust on your sleeve, The inside is already finished and you don't have to hand sew or catch stitch this all the way around because it's already machine sewn and it's all finished and then you won't see that lining on the underside. The nice thing is that if you want to roll your sleeves up when you're wearing your blazer, which I do often, you'll have not only a really great clean finish, but you also have really cute lining fabric. <laughs> so. Now we're going to baste this together so that it becomes one unit and we're going to do that for both of our sleeves. So starting at any notch, either the single or double, I'm going to just sew a basting stitch all the way around. Now when we attach our sleeve, we're attaching it as one. So go ahead and baste the other sleeve the same way and then we're going to create some gathering stitches in the sleeve cap so that we can ease our sleeve onto our blazer. Okay, so you should have three dots on your sleeve cap. So from one dot to the last dot, we are going to sew two rows of basting stitches. So go up as high as you can to, so that you have a longest stitch that you have on your machine. We're going to back stitch at the beginning but not at the end. And then we're going to pull and then you're going to do that again about a quarter inch away from your first line of stitching. these long threads so don't cut these to pull. Now we don't want to create puckers, we don't want to create gathers because this is not a puffy sleeve. We just want to take up some of the ease. So I want you to pull and then I want you to distribute until you get to the other side. Just do that a couple more times. If you start getting puckers or gathers, you have done too much and you need to let some out. 
All right. Now we're going to grab our jacket. And we're going to align our sleeves. So I'm going to pin up my notch first. And then I'm going to pin at my single notch. There we go. And then I'm going to pin that center dot onto my shoulder seam. a couple more times pin here it looks like I have a little bit of give here so I'm going to actually make a couple of snips into my jacket not my sleeve So I can ease the rest of that in. And now we're going to sew all the way around using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now we're going to sew using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. all there is to it. I'm going to remove all this excess stuff. And now your sleeves are attached. All that's left to do is to slip stitch your hem in place and make our buttonhole. There are a series of YouTube videos on different ways to hand stitch. I'm just going to show you a really quick and easy way. I'm going to just grab a thread or two from my jacket and then just a thread or two from my hem. And you just want to continue that all the way around. I have my marking for where my buttonhole is supposed to be. And so you're going to have to read your instruction manual on your sewing machine on making buttonholes because they're, they are not all the same. Um, this one here is different than any other that I had ever worked with before and I actually really like it but you'll need to um, take a look at your manual so I'm going to place my needle in I'm going to make my buttonhole Now clearly you guys should be making your buttonholes from the same <laughs> color thread as your fabric, but I need you guys to see it. So there's my buttonhole. I'm going to pierce my fabric and then I'm just going to open it up. Do not, do not cut through your stitches. And then I'm going to hand sew my button on the other side and we are all done. That's all there is to it. I hope you have enjoyed this sew along. Until next time, peace.